Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I think he's together with this woman. You want to go confront him? They're leaving the south entrance. Don't lose them. They're headed our way right now. Evan! Did you know that? In the end, who's going to be the one with the, the better career? From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up, camera. Get up. Get up. Get up. Whoa, whoa. This is, like, not how this is supposed Where? to work, Just go. Dog. Go with him. <laughs> I love you. I'm so sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching this installment of Cheaters. Meet Melissa Ronquillo, a young woman worried that her longtime boyfriend is abusing her trusting nature. Wanting reassurance, Melissa comes to Cheaters in search of the truth. Melissa Ronquillo, age 24, a telemarketer worried that her boyfriend may be seeking out the services of another woman. When Evan and I first started talking, we used to sit on the phone for hours. He'd call me as soon as he got home, and I couldn't wait for him to call me. I was always so excited, and I'm like, I got it, I got it. And it was always for me, because it was always him. And we used to talk and talk about nothing. But that was great. I, I loved listening to him talk, and I was always so excited for him to call me. We just had this instant chemistry, and it was just perfect from day one. Of course, he did throw up on my foot, but other than that, it was, it was a good start. Now that Evan and I have started living together, when we're in bed and he'll be sitting there and caressing my hair, and he'll tell me how he can see our kids and how excited he would be if, if I were to get pregnant. He's been spending a lot of time after class working on some project or something, I don't know. But things have been kind of different lately. I think us spending so much time apart is starting to wear on our relationship a little bit. When he doesn't tell me that he loves me and that he missed me today, is he telling somebody else that? Because. I deserve that. I've done everything for him. And he doesn't tell me that anymore. He's not even trying to hide it. He came home the other day and... and he smelled like perfume and I don't wear it. I know he's up to something. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Evan Boykin, age 22, a student who may be using his fiance to support his immature habits. Investigation day one. Cheaters begins the investigation at Melissa's and Evan's apartment, which Melissa dutifully pays for. It seems like the young couple is going about the normal business of building a life together. The two get into Melissa's vehicle, which she often lets Evan borrow to run himself back and forth to school. They soon arrive at a local college where Evan's enrolled in classes. Sometime later, detectives find out that Evan is doing more than attending his nightly lectures. He's also been attending a young, unidentified female. They hug for a bit, longer than more simple acquaintances would. 
It's apparent that Evans' behavior is not reflective of a committed man, but rather demonstrates the puerile ways of a little boy. Evidence of Evans' immaturity is found in a recorded phone conversation. Hey, baby. Hey. What are you doing? Nothing. Hey, you want to go out to eat after you get out of class? Mmm, I do, but I don't know if I can. I'm supposed to have a real big test tomorrow. I need to study. All right, um, I guess call me after you find out if you're going to be able to go or not. Okay, I don't think I will, but I'll try. Okay, well, I love you. I love you too, man. Okay, bye. Bye. Investigation Day 3. Evan thinks he's safe again as he ditches school and heads toward a private rendezvous with his new girlfriend, whom cheaters detectives have identified as Diane Manavon, a 21-year-old student and colleague. He seems ecstatic about seeing Diane as he stands up and wraps her in a warm fold. He leans over and kisses her, and she pulls him down towards her. This revealing rendezvous finally gives investigators evidence of Evan's infidelity. It seems as if Evan has long been acquainted with this supposedly new companion who has perhaps unwittingly fallen under the spell of his wayward charm. Investigation Day 8. They leave their shared residence while Cheater's investigators follow behind. But instead of heading directly to school, Evan drops Melissa off at one of the two jobs she works, ironically, to pay for Evan's college tuition. Evan then drives away free as a bird, heading back to the scene of the previous day's infidelities. As usual, Cheater's detectives find him preparing his own stakeout, waiting for his unsuspecting lover to join him on a school bench. The two enjoy a long hug, rocking back and forth in each other's arms like two lovers meeting after a long separation. They walk away with their arms around each other and head back to complainant Ron Keo's car. Cheaters takes a closer look and finds Evan and Diane involved in some serious mooching. Detectives watch as Evan and Diane paint the inside of Melissa's car red. Cheaters can no longer watch Evan abuse Melissa's companionship, trust, and responsible lifestyle. She is promptly informed of the information that Cheaters detectives have obtained. After the break, the confrontation Now with Evan's real studies clearly documented, Cheaters presents Melissa with the conclusive evidence of his infidelity. Wanting to understand, Melissa attempts to decipher the motivation of the man she loves. Melissa, thanks for meeting us out here tonight. Uh, I understand it's a very sensitive situation. Can you tell us what the climate of your relationship's been? It's been the same. I don't, I don't talk to him. I don't see him. I don't have time. Well. The reason that we wanted you to come out tonight was because our detectives have some information that we wanted to get to you as quickly as possible. On this day in the investigation, we identified you bringing Evan to school. And here he is, just sitting down, taking a break. I don't know if this is a classmate at this time. We did not know who this was. A quick embrace. And then they sit down together. Does he mention anything about other female friends that he might have to you? Yeah, he has friends, but I let him do what he wants to do. I trust him. OK. Now, on this day of the investigation, we've identified this girl that's coming up to him now, but we see a little bit different type of embrace. And it looks like this is more than just a friendly get together. And I'm sorry, I know this is tough. Are you OK? Now, on this day of the investigation, he's dropped you off at work. He continues on to school, so we know that's where he's going. And shortly thereafter, he's joined by his female friend. He doesn't even do that for me. I'm sorry that you have to see this. The detective followed them to a parking lot. He can get, he can get out. Where did he tell you he was going to be tonight? School. Well, he's at school, but I don't know if he's in class. Okay. I think he's together with this woman. You want to go confront him? Yeah. OK. All right, let's get started. Let me call. 
call the detective. Let's see if I can find out how close we are. It's Joey. What's happening? We're at the school right now. They're now in the vehicle. They're now leaving location. Just stay close. They went out to the parking lot, and now they're back in the car. What direction are you headed? They're headed south. Stay close. When it looks like they're starting to land, call me and let me know. Just keep me posted. Just stay close. Don't lose them, OK? It's Joey. Go. OK, they're in a, they've stopped at a park. They're in there together. Yeah. OK. They're making out. They're making out in the car. That's classy. OK, go about a mile up ahead. The park's right on the left. Go. What happened now? OK, sec security came up. All right. Don't lose them. Security came up and chased them out of the park. Stay on them. We're going to head back towards the school. We'll stand by. Call me as soon as you know anything. Coming up next, the conclusion. Yeah, it's Joey. Okay, so they went into a hotel. Okay. All right, we're moving now. Are you kidding me? They parked in the no parking zone and the car's getting towed. Okay, well, we're about five minutes out. That's all right. Sounds good. What else can you give somebody? All of me. I don't know what else I can do. Okay. Okay. Someone lock the. Someone lock this up. We're gonna move right down here. Let's get behind. We're gonna get all the way behind so they can't see us. Come on. Come on. Come on. They've got to come around this way. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Go. They're headed our way right now. We're ready. Let me know when we got about ten yards. Here they are. We got him. We got him. Go. Okay. Let's go. Evan. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Melissa what you're doing with this girl? I don't you're know. supposed to be at school. The school that she's paying for, yet you're with this woman. Do you have any explanation for that? I don't even know. What are you doing? This is the girl that you're living with. Did you know this I'm girlfriend? With her. Oh, so she didn't even know. So she didn't know that you were living with her? No. I didn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Well, you this didn't was want a... hurt me. What doing? I didn't know what was going on. No, it looked like you knew what was know going. What's going on, Evan? I don't even know what to say. It's I been two years, Evan. And years. How many people you have in class? You sleep with all of them? No, but it's just you know you fall in love with someone. You can't help it. Well, who are you in love with? You told her you were in love I with love her. I love her. I care about her deeply and dearly, but I didn't know how to tell. I didn't know. I didn't want to hurt anybody. So in the meantime, you'll just keep on taking the money. No. You'll let her pay for Let me take a second job to pay for your. I'm sorry. And what? You didn't tell her either. I didn't. I never knew he had a girlfriend. Do you know that he doesn't? Do you know that he doesn't even have a job? That she pays. I know that because. I'll go to school. Right. I had a job to pay for school. Where's the car? Anatomy. Where's my car? I don't know. Did you do something with it? It got towed. How am I going to pay for this? I'll pay for it. With what? I'll get money from my mom. Yeah, you can go back living with mom, too. So? Yeah. Cool. What has he been telling you? I mean, if I would have known, you know, no, that's, I don't do. You, so, you want to? Sorry. Cool. We don't have a job. I've been supporting it for cool. years. But at the, in, the end, in the end, in the end, who's going to be the one with the, the better career? and go on having a higher... What do I want you to have a better career for if you're not spending your time family. with me? We can I don't know what's going to happen. We'll get I'm you taken care home. of. We'll right. have someone get you home. Car, Evan. How am I going to get to work? Right now, I don't know. We need to go to the house, talk, and find out what happened. Hey, you need to ride home? Uh, Are you we ready? Need, we need, let's, let's I need to go. Time. How are you doing? You doing all right? Yeah. Perfect. You can't believe this. Can't believe what? She would go this far.
are you okay going home with him right now? He has to get... Oh, I want it does. done tonight. Okay. What are you thinking? I don't know. Following the confrontation, Melissa tries to make the best out of an unfortunate situation. Coming up shortly, Cheaters discloses how Melissa and Evan are doing. But next, Cheaters presents Ryan Jeter, formerly caught fooling around behind his girlfriend's back. At Cheaters' behest, Ryan clarifies the events surrounding his confrontation. Ryan Jeter, age 22. Ryan sits with Cheaters to give his account of his confrontation. Well, Rachel and I, you know, we had decided to go out that night, so we decided to go to the lake, and, you know, we had some beer and marijuana with us, and we were in the lake just having a good time, and then I, I kind of noticed the guy kind of following us around a couple of times, and I didn't know what he was doing. He was just kind of, you know, standing over there kind of watching us, and I'd, I kind of thought a little bit of it, but I didn't make it into anything. And then Fallon and the crew, you know, rolled up on us, and it was, it was embarrassing. I kind of, you know, I was new, I, I was busted at that point. And everybody, you know, flocked over to us and started saying stuff. What are you doing here? This is Do you have any explanation for what's what going on? What are y'all doing here? Have y'all been drinking, Tim? The only commitment. No, I you thought doing? you didn't drink this? anymore. Well, it's, I'm just having fun. This is just a friend, okay? Or you know I want to be with you, and you know I love you. And condoms. And okay, you love me. This is how you prove you love me? I do love you, but... So why do you have condoms? She got her beer, and she, you know, as you saw, she poured it on me, and she got a, the marijuana out and threw it in the lake, and she threw my keys in the water, which is pretty low. You know, I spent, spent a while out there looking for them. And then, you know, she threw our clothes all over the place, and, you know, she just made us base, basically look like idiots out there. You want another beer? You know huh? I love you. Huh? You, you know want another I beer? You. There. Drink some. Yeah. You're being ridiculous. Your keys? Calm down. Too hard? You're being ridiculous. Your car. Put Do you want these? Put my keys down. Put them down? Wait, oh, she's oh, oh dang. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, would you like your clothes, too? Yeah, please, so I can go oh, and talk You want your clothes? Shirt? Do you want your shirt first? Let me go get it. Yeah, come get it. Don't do that. Stop being stupid, please. Stupid? Yes. This is, what you're doing is stupid, Ryan. You're supposed to love me. We're supposed to be getting married. You. Yes, I was cheating on Fallon, and it was mainly because after waiting her for waiting on her for a while, I just got tired of waiting. And you know, any guy knows that you can only you know take so much. And Rachel was there, and she you know she was offering to help me out, and we had both you know Rachel and I had kind of both needed it, so. It just seemed like a good idea, but it didn't turn out the way I, I expected it, obviously. You want this? You want this? You want it all over you? This is yeah. my stuff! Get, no, 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 no. You don't stop. think you deserve it? No, I don't deserve it. Because you've been upstanding. If I was in the same situation, I would probably, you know, maybe talk to Fallon a little bit more and see if she was, you know, explain to her, you know, what I needed, you know, against what she needed and see if you know, we maybe could have met on in the middle on a couple of things, and I probably would have done a little bit different. You could have had me. You'll never see this ever. So stay with her I'll and see have you fun, later, okay? okay? You no, know you I won't. love. You can won't. we please go somewhere and talk? Don't, Don't leave me, please. Well, Fallon, you know, I'm I'm sorry I embarrassed you in front of all your friends and your family, and I wish it could have been a little different. And as you know, you know, I wanted to stay with you, and I, you know, I love you, and I always love you. But you know, I just want to apologize to you and. You know, if you can ever find it in you, you know, you, you got my number. After the confrontation ended, Melissa thanked Cheaters for helping her find out the truth about Evan. After making Evan come up with the money to pay for her towed car, she terminated the relationship and helped Evan get out of her apartment and her life as quickly as possible. Melissa tells Cheaters that she's learned a valuable lesson about love and trust, and the next time she gets into a relationship, she'll be more cautious with her money and her emotions. Evan Boykin insists that he's sorry for using Melissa, but there's little he can do about it now. He plans on staying in school and furthering his education. Evan says that he's learned a valuable lesson concerning manipulating people for personal benefit, and he will strive to alter his behavior in the future. Diane Manavon has not seen Evan since the incident and plans on staying as far away from him as she can. Cheaters wishes them all the very best. <laughs>